Yeah, so I don't know. I guess we'll just record right now and just yep. see, yep. just talk about whatever. So I guess to recap a little bit, because I guess it's tough because we did it before without yeah. without keeping it, because we had a bunch of technical difficulties as well, yeah. where we just like totally, um, we honestly just totally fucked up the recording. Oh. It totally wasn't you. Okay. Yeah. So, which sucks. Yeah. I didn't know you could see. Is that eggs right there? The yeah, skate spot? Is, I didn't yeah. even know you could see that from yeah, right here. That, that's where they usually go to. And that's like forbidden territory, like for you and me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. go over there a lot. Yeah. When I go, they're like, leave. Get out of here. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> so I don't, I don't even go there no more. Right. So yeah, we're here uh, yeah. at, Lin- at Lynch Skate Park with Keep Kids Off the Street. Yeah. 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 So I guess we could talk yeah. about, I guess, just as a little beginning, like what, what you even do. Okay. Um, I have a group of kids that, that live in Fitchburg and Gardner. Uh, some of them come from broken homes. So what we do is we travel um, year round to various um, skate parks. Um, we stay indoors in the wintertime and outdoors um, when it's nice. Uh, we don't have many places to go now because uh, Rye, New Hampshire, uh, Rye Airfield. Oh, the skate park. They just shut down. Oh, for real? I didn't yeah. hear. Yeah. Oh, they, my God. That yeah, sucks. Yeah. They sold the building. Wow. Um, we used to go to Mandan, Mass, too, to Rad. They also shut down. Damn. So the only place right now is um, Skater's Edge yeah. um, in Taunton, Mass. And the other one is Red Alert. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. Where's Red yeah. Alert? Uh, New Hampshire. Okay. But cool. it's far out, too. Right. I've heard of my kids have been there, but I, I haven't been there. But I heard it's nice. So like right now, we don't really have too many places indoor. Right. Um, but um, during the summertime, spring, fall, we just stay outdoors. We just travel. Um, sometimes I supply them with boards, um, skateboards, and um, also feeding them as well. So it's just about just keeping them active, positive, and hopefully away from drugs and trouble. Right. And at so, the at the and surrounding that is a, the photography project. Yeah, yes. Keep kids off the street. Yeah, so what happened was um, six six years ago, um, I was on my way to a skate park uh, with my two boys, and they had asked me to pick up one of their friends. Um, yeah. I, I actually saw him at graduation the other day. I almost didn't recognize him. Wow. But uh, when I knocked on the door, uh, the mother came out, and before I even opened my mouth, um, she said... Um, you're asking for too much. Uh, Gardner isn't ready for a skate park because um, at the time we were hoping for, for, for them to build a skate park. And um, she kept berating me. And then after she was done, um, she said, um, what you need to do is go home and open a Facebook page. So um, she has said, um, first she has said, um, do you even know what goes on at a skate park? So I'm thinking in my, in my head, I've been to so many skate parks. I had already met so many, like, really, really awesome people, amazing people from, like, all ages, young, old, in between, just amazing people. So I'm thinking to myself, this lady right here, she doesn't, like, really understand, Mm -hmm. you know. So, and that day, we ended up going to Fitchburg State Park. Her son didn't go, because she went Oh, right, yeah, yeah. You know, but we went, and then when I got back home, um, I opened up my laptop, and the first thing that came to my mind was keep kids off the street so it was all about trying to tell a story through photography to show people that skateboarding is actually a good thing and that it's it's clean fun yeah so that that's why i started um also um i told you i did photography when i was a kid growing up too right like wedding photography and stuff yeah no well before before that as a hobby you know when i was a little kid i did photography as a hobby but at the time when this happened, my camera was had been put away for years. So it like it, it brought back that passion that I had for photography as well. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. So do you feel like I noticed um, a lot of your portraits are like they, it is portrait photography. It's more less action and more kind of like more, capturing yeah. like the persona of the people that are yeah. there and like the attitude of the park. Can yeah. You talk about that a little bit. Like what your lens yeah. is, I guess, when you're taking photos. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say uh, most of it is portrait. Um, I do. Uh, uh, I also do some like in action, but it, uh, I, I would say that most of them are portraits. Um, I don't know if you saw one that I posted yesterday on Instagram. Uh, a black guy that was sitting down with his camera. I thought uh, we we were at a contest. I actually thought he was gonna uh, compete. And oh he, yeah. Yeah, and he says, "No, I, I'm here to do what you're doing." Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So right there, we had this connection, you know. And I, and I photographed him when he 
he was on, on bend the knee yeah you probably if you look on instagram you'll see it yeah and we had this uh, nice beautiful conversation you know and um and i told him i usually leave my phone in my vehicle because uh, you know i don't want to get distracted right yeah, yeah. yeah stay in the moment yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. So, what a wonderful thing too like because it's something that's really interesting too about skateboarding is like you probably noticed so many people around here are starting companies or skate you know skate brands and streetwear and the way that a lot of people are putting are advertising it online it's very kind of mysterious and tough looking with like these like punk like like you know what i mean kind of things and like that's how a lot of skateboarders depict themselves where it's like this kind of like edgy cool thing but when you photograph these same people you're capturing them smiling yeah, and yes. having fun and yeah. with their guard down and yes. less attitude kind yeah. of bad boy yeah, yeah. as to it yeah. <laughs> oh yeah yeah because that, that yeah. might contribute to the way people even see it where it, there's nothing wrong with depicting yourself like that looking like tough online or something but i could see why somebody who's totally unfamiliar yeah. with that world wouldn't understand yes that that's just like whatever and and that maybe they see your photographs and they go oh wow that's a that's not a scary dude that's yeah. a that's a 17 year old boy yeah yes, <laughs> on yeah. a skateboard yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I met a guy um, um, many years ago in Fitchburg seven feet tall okay he's got a helmet on um, knee pads elbow pads and he had a rugged look mm -hmm. like a really really tough look and I photographed him and then we were talking nicest guy in the world and i want to read to you um a text that he sent me the other day oh yeah day, for sure um that this just like pretty much summed it up and and you know and like i said um when i first saw him he you know i was like i was intimidated but i want to share with you um something he sent me please do yeah okay his name is david holiday um it says hi eddie uh grant and i are doing fine Skating in Nashville most weekday evenings. Thinking of you a few months ago, I spent more than an hour showing my girlfriend your photography. The people in your photos are so beautiful. It's memorizing. I hope you and your family are well. Take care and thanks for keeping us posted. What a kind thing to say. Yeah, to me that was like, you know. And this is yeah. like this tough looking yeah. skater dude yeah. in Fitchburg. Yeah, and I haven't seen I haven't seen him in like four four or five years. Wow! And and I texted him um, like two weeks ago, and he didn't respond. And I was a little bit sad because we had become you know pretty good friends. But then he responded. And when I read that, I, I was in tears. Wow! That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's so moving because yeah, it is definitely true that like most people, you know, skating or something have have been involved in it in some way. Uh, probably for years or their whole life or they've been fascinated with it for their whole life and I do think it is it isn't really that common for it to be depicted in, in a, a wholesome way because that's yeah, kind of what it, it's wholesome yeah. and, and, and family and yeah, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of camaraderie and friendship in, yes. in your in your in your works yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean because that is what you see and that's what all these a lot of these people that are here at the skate park right now will probably yeah. experience yeah but they aren't they aren't really seen that way a lot. That, yes, hmm. I met the guys uh, from uh, Pandemonium too yesterday. Mm -hmm. I met them at a contest, and they is, were, is that a company? Yeah, they, they oh, just okay. started because you were talking about that too. So oh, okay. they, just, oh, yeah, they yeah. just started. Right, they, gotcha. They, yeah, they just started. So so my sons was like, oh, they're they're a nobody. I'm like, you can't talk like that. You know, they just started. Right. They just started, and and I was telling my wife last night, Pandemonium boards, skateboards. My wife loved it. She loved it. And I met them and they were really cool that, you know, they were talking to me. So, and there's a few other companies, um, you know, brand new companies out there, you know, putting out, you know, boards and yeah. um, clothing brands. For sure. Know. Yeah. Yeah. You a know, lot of people uh, making moves. Yes. It's a really beautiful thing. Boston's like a crazy yeah. active city. Yes. Yes. With that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, that's another thing too. Like even just the name, like keep kids off the street. I feel like kind of the lens that you're applying to it that a lot of people maybe don't see right away is that it is 
not just like not a bad place or like a neutral thing but it's a positive thing like it's yeah. building community and giving people a skill set where they can build on that and like building persistence perseverance like a lot of really important skills that are good for kids and for adults yeah, yeah. versus the lens of like things people might be afraid of happening in a skate park like yeah. i don't even know like yeah. the yeah. one thing i want to mention too um I, I wanted to say this when we first spoke mm -hmm. um but you know i was on the highway so were we yeah yeah <laughs> So um, I've been um, photographing for um, skaters for six years. Um, and I'm going to say the, um, one word will pretty much sum it up. And the way I see it is that um, skateboarding is therapy for most of these skaters. That's, that's what I see. And, and I'm going to say it's not only therapy. To me, it's far more powerful and greater than any prescription drugs. No side effects. You know, yeah. so so that that's that's what I see when I when I come here and I see you guys on your boards, the therapy. Yeah, yeah I because when I'm I'm skating like because like I I feel like my primary focuses in life are like art or yeah. community or you know just creating stuff or like something like this. But what's really beautiful about skating to me is that I'm not, I don't have a thought in my mind. Yep, like I'm just fucking in in motion. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's like so it's literally just just like the it's like it's just literal practical application flow state because a lot of people try to reach flow state through like, like something meditative mm -hmm. or contemplative or kind of spiritual in a way but something active like a sport or something like i've heard it described i actually heard someone describe pole dancing this way funny enough where pole dancing is a physical activity that if you're not paying attention while you're doing it for like one second you're hitting the floor like yeah, you're getting yeah, fucked up yeah, yeah. and skateboarding <laughs> is the same, same. Yes, yeah, yeah it's the yeah. same way where yeah, you yeah. have to be yeah, yeah. so present yes. or you're going down yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. it'll probably yeah. kind of hurt oh yes yeah which is funny because it bringing it back to like meditation or like spirituality or something like it's a forced kind of mindfulness really yeah. Which is so funny with the way that people depict it or the way that some people might be afraid of it being depicted of like it being like a violent thing or like a yeah. crime thing. And it's like, if you really get down to the practice of what you're doing, there is, you have to pay attention only to that one moment that you're in the wow. entire time you're doing it to get good at it. Yeah. yeah and it's funny too, because speaking of like the, the, the kind of crime aspect to it, you can kind of, you can wonder like what crimes are even talking about. Usually it's destruction of property <laughs> and vandalism. Yes. Yeah. And that, pro and that might come from, you know, at eggs, like to describe for someone who doesn't know, that is like this, uh, you know, classic Boston Esplanade Park with granite uh, benches and ledges and whatever. And it's perfect for skateboarding. Yes, it's like right. a little accidental skate park over there. Yes. And what, spots too, right? Yeah, that's been there probably since like the 90s or something. It's in, it's in like yeah. probably thousands of skate videos. Yes. And, but with the destruction of property and vandalism, it's people putting wax on things and grinding it and yeah. altering its color and there's like not a lot of people like i think skate skateboarding and, and graffiti are not the same thing like there are people that do that that's a little bit of crossover but it's not the same but it's funny because that vandalism and the destruction like maybe yeah maybe someone's curb might get a little fucked up that's like not like that's true but with a skate park like it because like like that starts to go out the window because even yeah, though there's yeah. probably hundreds of people that skate there every day, people skate, like, the, the skate park is probably in use, like, a hundred times more than that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And I grew up in a town without a skate park, and there were tons of kids that skated. Yeah. And we skated in, like, the bank parking lot or, like, yeah. behind a, a superstore or something. But if there was a skate park in the town, that we wouldn't have been doing that. Right. If you want to talk about crime and like kids being at risk, like, where would you rather than be? Like hanging right. out behind a Seven Eleven or like yeah, at a park? In the, in the yeah. skate park, that's in perfect view of everybody from the street, yeah. right? And with lights pointing at them, or yeah, or like you said, behind a behind a building. That's yeah. where I was yeah. when I was like twelve. I was like lighting mattresses on fire yeah. and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you can't really do that at skate parks. Like yeah. Yeah. maybe you know, and maybe there's some assholes uh, sometimes. You know, there's people that do stupid shit like no matter what, what you know it happens yeah. but here like i mean there might be some some people here that do dumb shit at the skate park but yeah, not many though yeah i'd say probably more than definitely more than half it's yeah. it's 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 just good times i guess yeah but yeah. i don't know and you and we talked a ton about last time about 
your experience uh, organizing to get skate parks built. Oh, yeah. And some, yeah. some victories you've had in that. Oh, Could you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Um, I live in Gardner, um, and I know there were a lot of kids who got together many years ago, and they raised funds, um, and the city had money, um, and they had it for a long time, and nothing was happening. And I also kept meeting people, uh, parents, who were talking about how their um, son or daughter, when they were little, were asking the mayor and city officials to build a skate park, but now they were grown-ups and nobody listened. So mm. 10 years had went by, 15, 20 years, and I'm hearing these similar stories of a whole bunch of people, just the same, same scenario, just asking politicians to get involved, let's do this, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. Nobody was listening. So. Um, I used to go to Fitchburg a lot. Uh, there's a concrete skate park there. And every time we would head, um, drive through downtown, I would see my son's friends skateboarding on the streets. And I was thinking to myself, this is dangerous. They're almost getting hit by cars. Mm -hmm. So I would pull over, ask them. I would say, call your parents, make sure it's okay. Started bringing them a uh, group to Fitchburg. Then I started bringing them here to this park. So the nice thing about it was that when they came and they experienced this and they went back to Fitchburg, Fitchburg was like a walk in the park to them because, you know, they had experienced this here, you know. So right, more advanced yeah, more, yeah, shit, yeah. Yeah, so they went back to Fitchburg and they was like, oh. They, They're they, tearing they, it up, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah after, after experiencing this. So, yeah, yeah. so that was one of the cool things. So another thing that happened too, um, I didn't mention this the first time, uh, there was a political rally um, in Fitchburg a few years ago. And I went there to try to talk to some politicians and try to get them involved. And, you know, they just wouldn't listen. But there was a guy who approached me. I'll never forget it. And he said there was a news reporter that was looking for a story somewhere along the lines of what I was trying to do. So he gave me her contact. Her name uh, was Rebecca. I forgot her last name. But uh, he put me in contact with her. And she put out a story in the uh, in the Sentinel, which was really cool. Um, if you can look it up, it's titled "Gardener Man Smashes a Skateboarding Stereotype." Wow! So, and I thought the the title too was really really cool, and I read it. Uh, so anyway, uh, we met at a library in Fitchburg one day uh, with my sons, and we were talking, and we were in that room for about an hour, and it only felt like five minutes had gone by just talking wow. about like us right now yeah. it's like the, literally like almost one hour went by and we didn't even feel it <laughs> you know and then she said um she wanted to meet the kids and i'll never forget this it was a december 26 60 degrees blue skies usually you know it's cold yeah it was like the perfect day she went to the skate park i'll never forget it um i gathered all the kids up she wanted to interview some of them and she said you could hear a pin drop it was so quiet and then and, and I told her, well, that respect, you got, you have to earn that respect. It just doesn't happen. So, you know, some of the kids um, share their stories. Uh, there was one abandoned by his, by his parents, drug addiction, and, and he was hanging out with us. Um, um, he has had, like, suicidal thoughts, but um, he's still around, and I hope he can, you know, keep it together. Um, there was another two other kids using medications. And every time I picked them up, the parents would ask me, do, do, I, do I need to give you the, the prescription bottle? And I can honestly tell you that not once did they, did they ever need their medication wow. while, they were, that, while they were with me. Not once. Yeah. You know, and I'm not a mental health expert or anything like that. I just, sure. I just know that that board, there's something about that board that I just, I can't explain it with words. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an absolutely beautiful thing, too. And I think that there's really something, too, like the the role that you've probably played because like i mean even though you don't feel like you you know no like you know knowing a ton about skateboarding or this or that yeah. or something but i think that there's definitely a lot of of you probably played a huge mentor role yeah. in these kids lives you know yeah. during these times you know yeah. because you know maybe i don't know if you've experienced this but when you're a kid and maybe you're you're up to no good or maybe some of these kids experiencing you know mental health stuff like recognition from an adult yes. Yes. or that that approval like goes so far yes. you know what i mean so and like that's something too that like you probably know as a photographer doing portraits and stuff 
that to a lot of people, that's a, a huge honor to have their likeness captured in a beautiful way yes. because that's really uncommon for a lot of people. Yeah. To you, to us, like we're artists, we depict yeah, yeah. things all the time. Like, you know, it's like kind of, every, it's every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? But for somebody, you know, to be like, wow, like this artist, this professional uh, just captured my likeness. Like I was yeah. here. I exist. Somebody yeah. saw yeah. something in me that they wanted to yeah. document, you know? Yeah. That is something that I noticed going down your page. I was looking at it a little earlier today, too, um, that most of the comments are people being like, thank you, I really want to be on this page, or I'm so happy that I ran into you today. Or, right. Like, yeah. Just the gratitude from people yeah. that are in these portraits is really cool to see, too. Yeah, yes. Yeah, do you know about Humans of New York? You heard of that guy? I have. Um, or whoever that is? Yes, I have what? heard. One thing I used to follow that that guy that artist like a long time ago, and one thing that I always noticed about the blurbs that were written on the things is people would always say like, "I always wondered what it would be like to run into you," or "I always wondered what it, you know what I mean that type of thing." And like, yeah. I feel like it's a similar thing with your photographs because I knew about your photographs for a long time before I knew who you were, and that's how we met because you were selling your T-shirts, which we should, we could talk about in a few minutes too, yeah, yeah. and I had seen you photographing. And I put it together. I was like, holy shit. Like, I know who you are. And then I asked you. I was like, you're keep kids off the street. Because yeah. I was seeing your photographs. Like, I didn't know who it was. Like, or if it was someone my age. Or if it was, some, you know what I mean? And then to... Because you, like... That's actually an interesting question. Or something that I didn't think about. Is there an, uh, an, an intentional sense of anonymity? Like, are you yeah. anonymous? Uh, oh, with no, the no, page? No, oh, or no, it's no. just kind of just... No, it's just that I, I don't like, like, to... I don't like, like, um, portraying myself. It's not... Yeah, my, right. Oh, you know, like, look at me, here I am. Right, you know, yeah. I'm not about that. My my whole thing is I just want to show the beauty of, of skateboarding. That's yeah. All. I got people sometimes wanting to photograph me, and I keep telling them the beauty of skateboarding. I'm like, I'm behind the scenes. You know, I don't want to be like, hey, hey, you know. Yeah. Look, look at, at me. Yeah, yeah look yeah. what I did. Yeah. Wow, that's actually yeah. a really interesting thing because, yeah, like, right. you would have thought if you didn't, like, I thought you were like some type of anonymous photographer no because that's a pretty no, no. common i feel like that's okay. a common format no, a lot of people yeah. do that okay no yeah. no yeah no that's really cool actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no no i don't i don't want to be anonymous but i don't want to be I, I, you know like also like you know i'm doing this you know i i just want to i just want to tell the story yeah, yeah. that's all i want to do tell the story yeah one thing i i kind of love about it too that like you know there's so much talk about these days about social media bringing people together or to, you know bringing people apart whatever like all this discourse about that but one thing that i noticed about your page that i think is kind of interesting is with skate parks uh you always see people that you see the same people at a lot of the parks yeah. that you go to like just yeah. same so repeating faces and stuff yeah. but you don't ever you it's really you don't i don't always learn people's names i just see them i'm like there's that guy but like <laughs> then but then i and then i started looking at your page a lot and I see like, oh shit, like I remember that dude. Like, and then his ta Instagram's tagged. Now I know him. Yes. And yeah. now I've, I've connected myself to some person or making connections through your photographs. Because yeah, right. I scroll through and I go, holy shit, like I see that guy like every Saturday night. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's yeah. The, the tray flip guy or yeah. like that's the whatever guy, that's you know. Tray flip guy, yeah, the bull guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was at an, an event, an orchard event on a skateboarding. Day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, it's two days ago. Yeah. And there were two. Two female skateboarders just coming in, arriving. Took this beautiful shot, just beautiful. Um, I posted it. Um, I usually ask them, but this time I didn't. I mm -hmm. just posted it. One of them said, "I do not consent." Oh shit! So I was like, "Oh, kind of messed up," you know. And then after that, um, she was okay with it and thanked me. Oh. So and I was gonna delete it, but I said the photo is just too beautiful. So I just left it alone. But she did thank me. They both thanked me. Wow. But then, And let me tell you something funny. One of them, you know, as a photographer, we shoot multiple times. Because, you know, sometimes you close your eyes. Sometimes you got your, you know, we're looking for that. Right? Sure. You yeah. know? So we shoot multiple. But sometimes people, they just don't know. They, they're probably thinking something else in their heads. And, and the girl said, that's enough. One of them. She said, that's enough. And then, you know, I just left her alone. But she then thank me when she saw the photo she did thank me wow so she probably then just realized it's not just somebody just trying to snap 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 yeah, yeah right so, you know so there was a guy too in new york same scenario 
um, I, pho I photographed him at LES. He was going to try to do the railing. And I took some nice shots of him. And he didn't want to give me his Instagram. And he said, um, can I give you my email? So I, I knew it looked like he felt a little bit uncomfortable. But when he saw the photos, he was like blown away. And he was like, oh my God, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm going to follow your Instagram. So that happens sometimes. They just, they don't understand that, you know, like some people take pictures, but there are other people like you say, like, you know, that art, it's art. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cause, cause that's a really yeah. important distinction too. Cause like for, yeah. for the listener that may not yeah. know that there are a lot of photographers that shoot models, mm -hmm. people yeah. who professionally yeah. get photographed and they know what to do. They know how to act. You know what I mean? But that's a, that is its own skill that I don't yeah. have. I would be a terrible model. <laughs> but what you were doing, like... Literally, I think the wedding photography background is a really important piece of context because you're photographing people, not that, you know, not people that don't know or something like that, even if they do know, but you have the ability to make them look like models or to yeah, make them yeah. look like prepared, yeah. presentable, good subjects versus, you know what I mean? Like, and that's like a really interesting, uh, I guess, talent too. Yes. You know what I mean? Because... I don't know, like if you pulled a, like, you know, when people photograph, if I know I'm being photographed, it's like you don't know what to do with your hands yeah, yes, or you yeah, don't yeah, like, you're yeah, like, yeah, shit, like, do yeah, I smile? Yeah. Do I try yeah, to, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but it seems like you, I guess, like, uh, ha just have this, this, this knack to kind of get people comfortable yes. being photographed. And like you talked, we talked about before, like, you know, you kind of work with like kind of a candid photo method, yes. right? Yeah. Where... The, you know there's the issue of, of people being consenting to being photographed or this or that but you talked about how your your strategy is to just just get the that good shot to get the yeah. moment yeah and yeah. then I, and then i approach the person and ask them right i'm gonna capture the moment because if, if imagine if i went around asking everybody <laughs> that you you wouldn't capture that moment that you see that beautiful moment you just want to capture that beautiful moment yeah right and then out of respect out of respect i go you know, and I said, I, I captured this. Uh, right. You know, are you okay with it? And 99% of the times, they're okay with it. Yeah. I get that 1%, you know. Right. Someone and, says. Which is okay. They say, know? oh, I'm yeah. in the witness protection program. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. but the vast majority are, are usually, you know. Um, right. I'll give you an, an example. I was I was in New York uh, three weeks ago. Um, and there was um, a 10-year-old girl being trained by a guy that I met years ago in New York. Uh-huh grandmother was there the mother was there i took a few shots i said you know i can send them to you if you'd like we started talking um grandmother insisted on paying me oh wow uh, <laughs> insisted i said you don't have to i mean I, I do this for a living but when it comes to skateboarding it's okay i send her the photos um you wouldn't believe um she sent nobody's ever done this before uh she sent me a 300 dollars check Wow. Uh, which I'm going to be using for a skate camp this summer. Oh my God, that's, that's so amazing! Great. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. yeah. This never, this never happened in my life. In six years that I've been doing this, it never happened. And the grandmother lives in Maine. Um, she's visiting in New York. She's with her granddaughter, and and I, it's like I'm still baffled. Yeah. I'm still baffled. So. That's great. Yeah. And we should talk yeah. a little bit about that too, because I know we talked about it before, but yeah. since it's a lost file right now, yeah. Um, the skate camp. Yeah. Like. We haven't touched on that at all in this recording. Yeah, so so every summer, um, it's always after the 4th of July uh, weekend. Um, we have skate camp in Fitchburg for three weeks. And it runs from 10 a.m. till noon or 12.30, uh, Monday through Thursday. And then after the third week on the last day, we usually give out between two and four skateboards and a few other items. Uh, but this year, we're going to make it special because um, the owner of Orchard Skate Shop is going to sell me stuff at at cost so it's it's gonna be like really really good this year that's, that's awesome. amazing yeah yeah wow so you guys yeah. have kind of found a partnership or a sponsor with uh with orchard orchard he's he's like he's the real deal that's all i can say about yeah him. So that's where he's i get real, my boards he's the real deal yeah that guy I, I went to his warehouse the other day and he had a box this huge box for me filled with helmets wow and then when i got home and put the box in the garage and I started taking them out only to find 10 brand new skate backpacks. Oh. So so I called them. Actually, I, I texted them and I said, listen, I want you to know that there were 10 backpacks in there as well. 
because just in case he didn't know, he said, don't worry about it. You can do whatever you want. And I'm going to rap for those on the last day. That's wow. awesome. That's yep. sick. Yep. And he's going to sell me skateboards at, at cost. So the $300 I got the other day from the um, grandmother in Maine will be used for that. And, and I'm also out of my own sweat. I'm going to also be uh, providing um, more skateboards. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so great, especially yeah. like the kids that you work with. That must mean the world to get yeah. a new deck. Yes. Yeah, when I yeah, because like those like they're they're definitely. I mean, if you're working full time and you got a little bit extra money, like that fifty, sixty dollars, you know, like once every couple months is one thing. But that's a lot of money when you're a teenager and yeah. you're not working or, you know, you <laughs> like that's like so that's like a pretty big deal to get a brand new yeah. board, especially to yeah. some of these kids. Maybe it'll last them months yes. or the year. Yes. Who knows? You know. I ran into a kid um, actually like three days ago in Fitchburg at the skate park and he, he's now he's all grown up and I asked him are you coming to skate camp and he said I don't have a skateboard and I said just show up <laughs> just show up <laughs> yeah yeah that's what's up so are yeah, you yeah. are you getting the, the orchard uh, shop boards yes oh cool like the yeah. green the green ones yeah. or the one oh that's yeah. awesome yeah yep. those are good yep yeah. and, the, and the trucks and the wheel he, he's wow. gonna um, he's setting it up yeah he said he said when, when I, I told him, I said, um, I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach my fundraising goals, and he said, send me your wish list. Oh wow! It's like <laughs> he said, and I and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm saying, wow, th- this is the real Santa Claus right here. Yeah. <laughs> the real Santa Claus. Twice he wow. said, send me your wish list. He said, oh, don't man. worry. He said, don't worry. We're gonna make this happen. That's good shit, especially Set, after the yeah. pandemic, because yeah. they must have taken a financial hit when everything yeah. closed down yes. too. So yeah. to be putting that money back in right away is yeah. so so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's he's real like, shit. Yeah, he's like, I never, I never, like imagined that a, a skate shop owner, you know, would just talk to me and, and, and you know just say, hey, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. He gave me a stack of um, stickers too, like this. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's Armin. Yeah, Armin. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's nice. like, he's like the nicest. And the cool thing about him, too, is that he grew up in the Gardner area. Oh, yeah? And he first skated when he was a kid in Gardner in the back in the back of some business. I forgot which one it was. So when he was telling me the story, uh, when he was a little kid, he first skated in Gardner. And I live in Gardner. And it was like we just, wow. uh, yeah. you know, it was like this, you know. Um, yeah, just uh, like a serendipitous yeah, yeah. Interesting connection. Yeah. So, yeah, is there a skate park in Gardner now? There, there is. Um, what happened was uh, when that article came out a few years ago, um, I went to um, City Hall and I said, um, I would like to know when are you guys going to break ground? And the guy in the office said, It sounds like you were bashing us. And I <laughs> said, No, I'm not bashing you. I just know that you guys have money allocated for years and years and nothing has been done yeah and two weeks later they broke ground and we were driving by with the i was driving by with the kids after going to the skate park and when they saw that they broke ground they literally went crazy they went berserk that's so exciting <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. so awesome. yeah yeah so then and then the other funny thing too is that i would show up to the skate park and uh, kids would come up to me and say do you own this i said no I'm just an advocate. Um, did you build this? No, I'm just an advocate, as I told you the other day. So that's all I am. Yeah. I'm just an advocate. I wish I could do the things that you guys do. Hmm. I can I can cruise around. Sure, but yeah. You're not gonna catch me trying to like go down a ramp or something crazy <laughs> like handrails that. Handrails and shit. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So to touch on that a little bit too, I know we talked about it before, but when you went from passion of photography to making it more skateboarding focused that was because of your boys right because of my two sons because yeah my two sons they eat and breathe this 24 7 i'll tell you I, I don't know if i told you this the other time uh, my son junior uh he's 18 um i brought him to the shop uh, for the first time i said you pick out whatever you want you're usually on the dollar menu so he, oh, was yeah, shocked. Yeah. he was shocked when I said, pick whatever you want. I don't, I don't care. I, the price, don't worry about the price. Whatever you want. I'll never forget this. He went home, and that night, um, he was around eight years old. I went into his room to check up on him, and you won't believe this. He had the skateboard. He was hugging it while he was sleeping. Oh. And he had a smile in, on his face. And, and it's like, how do you sleep 
with a smile on your face. How do you, how do, you do that? <laughs> I'm literally, so I'm looking, I'm looking at him like thinking to myself, hey, man, am, am I going crazy here? Am I losing it? <laughs> he got a smile on his face, sleeping oh with gosh. a boy, with a hug in his boy. And oh, then, that's and, so sweet. Yeah, and then he said, and if I had to choose uh, between a girlfriend and a skateboard, <laughs> I'm gonna choose a skateboard. Oh. Yeah. That's a couple of years later now. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so they eat and breathe this. So, so I'm going to say that I'm just, they don't know this, but I'm going to say that even though I can't do the stuff that you guys do, I'm just as passionate. Mm. I can tell you. Just yeah. as passionate. It shows. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Because I think the thing, too, about all of this, like when you're talking about people thinking things go wrong at skate parks or like politicians not listening when people need a park in their area, a lot of these kids don't advocate because they don't know how to talk to people like that. Or like they're not in a position where they ever really would. Like, I think a lot of it is like proving to other people, proving to yourself what you can do. And if you're like a 16 year old kid or something, you're not going to go to City Hall and like do that stuff. So being an advocate, I feel like goes such a far way because there's not a lot of them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's something too. Like, because not only like where the people in those offices might not listen to them, like they think they're just some kids. Yes. But those kids, like I, I, you know, they they don't know who to ask for or what's allowed or like you know somebody could just lie to them and they would have no idea you know, like they're, they're stupid or anything it's right. they're kids but. right like it's like there's definitely it's almost like its own vernacular but kind of like corporate office bureau, bureaucracy yeah. discussions who to talk to who, what you you know what i mean you know there's so it's a it's a language yeah yeah you know so that's got to be yeah. That's got to be a difficult thing. To yeah. be that bridge. Kind of. yeah. yeah, another thing too, especially to talk about like the passion and stuff and being and really caring about skateboarding, you know, if, uh, being in the, involved in the past with commercial photography, that there is like an incredible value and price tag on, on good photos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that, people pay a lot of money to get shit like that done. Yeah. And, you know, for you to, to be out here doing that, like, like, I think, like I think going back to people feeling honored to be depicted like yeah. i think that that's like that's like a huge deal because that woman like who the that donated the 300 to yeah. you yeah like maybe I, I don't know maybe that was like a fucking deal like what was that like yeah. how much would somebody even like charge for like a couple hundred photographs or like an hour or two session you know what i mean yeah that's yeah. gotta be expensive yeah. yeah yeah so for you to be doing that not because like out of I don't know it's not like it's not even like just out of the kindness of your heart it's just because it's so interesting and and you care so much and it's like a a huge part of your life you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and we talked about before you didn't grow up skateboarding Uh, or you grew up seeing it around or did I tell you my first experience I think you I think you talked about a a, a pretty good wipeout I fell I fell on my back I was trying to take off I'll never forget I was on Lincoln Road um, where I grew up near Flatbush and in New York? In New York. There were a couple of friends. They said, here, try it. I tried to take off and, and fell on my back so hard that I actually thought I lost my voice permanently. Oh, oh God. Man. Yeah, it knocked the wind out of me, literally. Yeah. So I hit myself on my back and my head. So I never wanted anything to do with skateboarding. And whenever I saw someone on a skateboard, I just, to me, it, it had no no meaning, nothing. Right. Yeah, yeah. So my sons... um, they, they were asking for skateboards for years. Um, the first one I bought was from Five Below. They said it was fake. Brought them to um, Toys R Us. Got them a penny board. They told me it was fake. <laughs> Went to Walmart. They said it was fake. And I'm like, I didn't know there were fake boards. I didn't know nothing about that. Yeah. So then finally one day, I brought them to Eastern Border in Lemon, so they're no longer there. But that's when I told you that my boys were talking to the manager and I literally froze listening to them talk to the manager and I had no I had no clue that they knew all this stuff about skateboarding. I just stood there like like I said, it sounded like they were talking in a different language. And they were <laughs> young at the time too. They right? were young, they were yeah, like seven and nine years old. Wow. I literally froze listening to them and embarrassed too because here I am, dad <laughs> clue they had they didn't have a clue. They knew all this stuff. Yeah. They didn't have a clue. How, I, how did they learn? 
Was it like yeah. just like online or? I, I don't even know. But I, <laughs> well, I bought them. I bought them video games too. Because oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Tony Hawk video games. Yeah, or, yeah. Video it's... games. So hopefully they will forget about the skateboards. <laughs> so then I tried, like I told you, the five below that five dollar board. Yeah. And I kept trying little thing, little by little, but no, they kept every single day just asking for skateboards, and I felt kind of guilty and kind of bad that I didn't listen to them in the beginning. Imagine uh, if I had listened to them in the beginning. I mean, they're good now. But imagine if I had listened to them in the beginning. Who knows? You know? Yeah. There's a so, lot of people uh, that never do. Like you were saying, people that are in their 20s now that were asking people yeah. at Town Hall or asking their parents yeah. for help with the skate park and gardener. Yeah. And that just never happened. Yeah, yeah never. They never probably listen. never learned to skate. Yeah. That's an interesting yeah. point because they, uh, they raised that money a long time before they even broke ground. So those... Yeah, they so, had the money, yeah. So the kids that raised that money were probably... Adults. Yeah, by the... Adult. Yeah, they were wow. adults. Yeah. That, so that's yeah. a... That's a and that's, Kind of like you talking about feeling that kind of like, oh man, like what if I bought my kids these boards earlier? But like in a systemic way, like what yeah, if the town yeah. built that park sooner? That's a generation yeah. l- lost, lost that, that lost yeah. out to that yeah. that benefit. And that's yeah. the thing. I feel like on a bureaucratic level or like thinking about projects, like if something takes like 20 years for construction, yep. that's pretty normal. Yeah. But if you think about the moments in somebody's childhood or like the formative, like... 17 year old kid that was hanging out at the skate park all the time and didn't end up doing drugs or didn't end up yeah. like falling in with the wrong kind of people quote unquote yeah. like those things matter in a yeah. family sense or like a small scale lens in the micro yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, let me share something funny with you too um, I, I don't know I don't remember if I shared this or not um, we went to a meeting um, in Gardner um, before they built the skate park and there was a lady in charge um, talking about the project and my son at the time, I think I told you, he had mentioned the trick called the 540. Mm-hmm. And, and the lady in charge said, you need to go back to school and learn math. <laughs> so uh, so there's a group of people in that room. You know, to me, that was kind of embarrassing to be talking to a 10-year-old like that. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, and then a few minutes later, he, he, he's playing with this tech deck. And he mentions in it again, 540. And a second time, she says, you need to go back to school and learn math. So I go home that night and I Google 540 and there it was. It's a 360 and a 180. Right. He, he does it too. He does it. Wow. It's like he, when I, the first time I seen him do it, it was like insanity. Yeah. So, so I'm thinking to myself, this lady here is in charge of this project, doesn't have a clue about skateboarding. Not only that, she tells me the project was going to take up to three years to build to build a skate park I said this doesn't sound right to me Yeah, it shouldn't take more than maybe six months if that and she's talking about up to three years I said there's something something's not adding up here so that's when I met after that that's when I met the news reporter and then the article came out Mm. and then then everything from there accelerated it got the ball rolling wow I wonder if there's a similar story with, with Lynch there the is. Lynch Skate Park here, because this was in the making for a long time. There is. There was a lady, I forgot her name, uh-huh. and she would always get angry because the skaters were over there disturbing the ducks. Right across the oh, yeah. Charles River. Yeah, disturbing the ducks. So it was, uh, you know, she had money and she had, you know, she was known. Yeah. So she was the one that helped get the ball rolling on this skate park. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. Interesting. She, she was here that day. She was here on the, on the grand opening. Oh, wow. And she told the story. <laughs> she told the story about the skateboarders over there disturbing the ducks and her, I believe, her property. If I'm not mistaken, like her property, too. She's yeah. built it to get them out of her hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. She That's wanted, so yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. She was here. She was here that day. That's interesting because for, yeah. the, for the listener, too, for someone who doesn't know, we're on the Charles River. The Zakem is to our left. Lynch Skate Park behind us and the skate spot we're talking about we can see skate I can see skateboarders there right now yeah we see people roll by across the river yeah you think about the history in this area as far as skateboarding goes it's pretty fucking insane there is a lot see all of this around us right now yeah their orchard orchard actually if you go on their YouTube channel you can see uh, skateboarding edits that that crew made in like the 90s in like 1998 97 yeah all skate videos around Boston skating yeah. some of the same places yeah. like so they're also skating places that don't exist anymore probably yeah, but yeah. there there's clips from Boston Public Library that weird yeah, ledge yeah. right next to the library there's always people skating there yeah woo pigeons um, <laughs> but yeah like it's like there is a, a, a lineage yeah. 
yeah. of, of skateboarding history here. And so, not crazy to think that there wasn't a park that whole time. There was not a park, yeah. Because no, wasn't. What was this? When did this open? Like uh, five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah. Wow. And let wow. me tell you, um, Andy McDonald. Yeah. Uh, he was a world champion. Wow. He left because he got tired of waiting for this to be built. Huh. Wow. So he left to Cali. He, wow. he, was, he was world champion a few years ago. We met him here actually that day. We met Tony Alba. Uh, Alba. Oh yeah, he was here. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a whole like yeah, little yeah. mini documentary about the yeah. opening day I've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We met like it was just amazing. You know. Oh. Yeah, Tony Alba was one of the first uh, pro skaters in like the 70s. Yes. In the 60s or 70s, yeah. I think. And we met um, um, Day One Song. He was here too. He was mobbed. Let me tell you, <laughs> there were like 500 people, literally, like sardines he could he couldn't even move he couldn't wow. even move he that was a security guard i said listen we love this guy you don't have to worry about him we love him right he was like he couldn't even move oh my god he couldn't move and he gave he gave me a shout out too that i'm never gonna forget that really cool. yeah day one song yeah that's sick yeah, yeah so and for people yeah. who don't know that's he's like an yeah. iconic yeah, pro skateboarder. Yeah, yeah. He was in the yeah. video games and all the videos. He's like God. He's almost right. like God. To, to yeah. <laughs> yeah. No yeah, shit. Yeah, That's so was, fucking yeah, cool. He was here, man. And because this is one of the biggest parks around, there are pro skaters that come here now, right? Like, weren't yeah. you saying there was a time you were here that yeah. PJ Ladd was here? PJ Ladd comes through. There's uh, probably Brandon Westgate. He's another Massachusetts pro. Yeah. But yeah. Ch- Ch- um, Chavez was here the other day. I think it's Chavez. Oh, oh Chad, I'm not sure. Chad. Chad. Chad Mendes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, pro skater. There was a whole bunch of them here on skateboarding day. Oh, in really? Area, in this area. I missed oh, them. Man, I was here. Sick. I was here. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids were like, oh, they were over there. Pro skaters were over there. I missed them. Oh, wow. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like you said, this is, I'm pretty sure this is probably, is, I would guess it's probably the biggest outdoor park. It is. In, in, like in this, pro- maybe in even in New Coast. England. In the East, in the East Coast. Coast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a valuable thing that exists. It's interesting too because I feel like in skateboarding history or like the culture of it, the West Coast has a way bigger reputation than anywhere on the East Coast. And this only having been here for five years, maybe that will change. Yeah, because yeah, something yeah. too like when I was like, because I was I was born in '95, which in the in the grand scheme of things in skateboarding history, it's like not that long ago. <laughs> but when I was a kid, watching people excel. It was it was really slow. Like people who skated for five, six years, like doing really things that are really basic now were advanced when I was when I was younger. Because now I see kids that are so young, people that have been skating for only a year because of a skate park like this existing. It's the biggest park on the fucking East Coast, like high level pro yeah. shit oh, yeah. being built here just uh, and being accessible to everybody is making people who are brand new excel so so much faster than they used to it's like when you watch skate videos pro skateboarders from the 80s and 90s the tricks are really rudimentary they're really awesome they're trailblazers they invented the tricks that that we do but at that they're they look very basic yeah but when you and you look at pro skateboarders right now and it's like like fucking out of control like it's shit that you could that you couldn't have conjured up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and like that's because society invests in the in, in the in at the in the right time and places and yeah. in the most fortunate circumstances invests in this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't imagine what the skate park costs. Four million. Four million? Four million? That's wow. fucking insane. Four million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And like so for and for it to exist, but like now like to, in 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 a the Summer Olympics of 2021 that's happening, like probably like right now, is the first year skateboarding is in the Olympics. That's first crazy. Time. That's first in time. ever, which is like probably pretty late. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because skate, like uh, skate competitions in, in popular culture and are on TV have been around since the early 2000s, maybe even the 90s. I don't yeah, actually that's weird, don't know. Actually. Yeah. Like there was Boom Boom Huck Jam back in the day, X Games. Yeah, X Games. Or and then there's Do, Street the League. Do, yeah, the Boom Tour. Yeah, Dew Tour, right? Yeah. That's still going on. I think the Dew yeah. Tour is happening right now. Yeah. I think it's going around Europe. Yeah. Well, something I think that's crazy about all of this, it just keeps recurring. Like, when you're talking about your boys trying to get into skating and, like, maybe not, like, realizing or that they were that into it at the time in the beginning or, like, 
stuff with like they're not being a park here for this long it's like the culture of it the people that are into it care about it no matter what's going on like whether people are giving them the facilities or not yes. they're still learning and they're yeah. still doing it even though they're falling down and getting hurt while they're learning like yeah. that kind of tenacity is so admirable yeah, yeah. there's two things um, I forgot to mention uh, one of the coolest thing about skateboarding that I enjoy is like I'll meet somebody and I won't see them for a year and when I meet them, like, they're barely standing on their board. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see them the following year, and they're literally tearing the park apart. <laughs> and it's like, you know, everybody's at their own level. But when you see that progress, yeah. it just blows you away. Yeah. It's inspiring. Like, yeah. It's like, you know, like, I want to do this. And, you know, like, I want to <laughs> get on that board and try it. You know? Yeah. I don't know if I told you I fractured um, two ribs um, a few years ago. Oh, really? Skating? Yeah. yeah I hit oh, a, man. I, I hit a pebble and I literally went flying. Ooh. Oh, jeez, yeah. I didn't have time to react that I should have put my arms out, but I yeah. landed right here. Even but, even the yeah, most yeah. advanced skateboarders can get decimated by a pebble. Yeah. <laughs> I had a little girl came up to me and tried to pull me up, and I said I appreciate the gesture, but... <laughs> no, you're not, you're not going to be able to help me up. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, it was at, a, at the tennis court in front of the skate park in Fitzroy. I'll never forget it. I literally went flying. Literally. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you had a pretty big white belt recently, yeah. too. I did, yeah. I, I sprained my rotator cuff. Oh. It's still fucked up. Oh. Still hurts. Uh, uh, that was a Quincy skate park. Uh -huh. I was out skate of commission park. for six months. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a long yep. time. I couldn't cough, sneeze, sleep. Jeez. Lay, lay on, lay down. I, I, wow. I, I was, I was a wreck for six months. Damn. And then I, after I was healed, I was walking out of my house one day, and there was something in front of me. And guess what? I fell again and almost landed in the very same spot. Oh my god! Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> but this time, this time I, I you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arms up. <laughs> yeah, in the same spot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, this was after being healed. After six months later, I'm like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. wow! Yeah, yeah. But you're back here. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, are your are your sons out out street skating China, right now? China you said Chinatown. 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 Gotcha. That that's their new. That's the new yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah. But if you go there, it's tiny, <laughs> and you've got people. You've got um, the Chinese uh, playing volleyball. Yeah. Volleyball <laughs> on one end, volleyball on the other end, and they're in this tiny center. With a, with a ledge or something, it's like, come on, guys! <laughs> and you would think that you would have more fun here, right? Yeah. But they're they're more they're, I don't street know if I told you, yeah, they're into street. They they call me, they call you and me lynch rats. Lynch rats, yeah, that's yeah what, that's I've heard they, that before. That's what they call us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're a lynch rat, and all your buddies are lynch rats. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, hey, they're cool to me. Right. They're all cool to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you know, they're like on a different level. You know. Yeah. Sure. So they, sure. You know, they view us, you know, yeah, uh, amateurs, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. definitely is uh, a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of street street skaters that uh, that really, really prefer to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's our respect. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let there me tell be. you. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, there must be a culture of it here if this is yeah. so new. Yeah. True, actually, yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. I want to tell you something funny. Sure. This happened um, a couple of months ago. Um... I don't know if you have if you knew this, um, Gardner Police Station. They spent like fourteen million dollars. Oh wow! And my son was skating in front of the police station. Out of all places, <laughs> it's like, out of all places, why would you why would you shoot the police station? Right. Literally, and that, that, that's this ledge in front of the station. And I'm like, you do realize there's a camera right there. He, he didn't care. He's skating right there. Well, anyway, he tells me he comes home one day and he says, Dad, there's two t two, two kinds of skateboarders. There's the normal skater, and there's the real skater. And then he says, you, do you know the difference between them? I said, no. He shows me a video of this 12-year-old kid going down this rail, literally smashing his face. Shit. So when he's showing me the video, you know, I can't watch, you know, we can't watch stuff like that. You know, people getting hurt like that. Yeah. And then he says, it doesn't end there. Keep watching. The kid, after smashing his face, he lands the, the trick. Wow. Right? So he said, Dad, this is the difference between a real skater and a normal skater. The normal skater is going to get hurt and say, Mom, Dad, bring me to the hospital. <laughs> and the real skater is going to say, I got to land this. Right. So that's the difference, right? <laughs> so check this out. He's at the Gardner police station on that ledge I told you about. 
and he there's a pillar and he's going over the pillar and he hurts he's got a big on his foot right there a big hole oh geez doesn't say nothing to me comes home 10 o'clock at night he rolls up his pants and he says dad take me to the hospital <laughs> and i'm like I thought you was a different breed. <laughs> what happened? Built different. Yeah. yeah, you told me the other day that the real skateboarder, you know, the normal one is the one that's going to say, bring me to the hospital. Right. <laughs> right? So so listen to this. It, it, it doesn't end there. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. Right. I'm in the ER room in the hallway. He's, on the, he's laying on the bed. The nurse comes, and you're not going to believe what she said. She said, are you ready, Vargas? He goes, yeah. I've been watching your skate videos on Instagram. <laughs> and, yo, and I'm just there, standing there, just shaking my head that the nurse attending him has been watching his videos. That's so funny. Yeah, that yeah. is crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> what a small life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So normal and right. real. And real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those but, those injuries don't stop. No, no. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing that, that that I kind of regret not doing. Yeah. We have done dozens of trips over the years, dozens. And the one thing I don't re- that I regret is not filming them when they were in the cars and the car cracking up jokes. That's oh, the one thing right. I regret not doing that. Huh? Yeah, we had so much so much fun in the vehicle, just them cracking up jokes. I had a kid, I would drop him off, and he would literally try to skate onto the sidewalk and the steps going into the building and it's like nine o'clock at night after skating like for 10 hours it's like <laughs> and he's still you know trying to i'm like damn that's when i said they, they, they really love this stuff yeah yeah you know? and i actually i ran into him um, his name is julian gonzalez i ran into him at the lemonster mall a few months ago and um he has a license now he's going to college but i ran into him and he said thank you and he said you were like a dad to me, and oh. to and to me, I was like, that means a lot. Yeah, that's a really beautiful thing. It's like we were talking about earlier that that approval and that recognition and that guidance is like changes people's lives. Yeah. It goes so so far, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. There's a lot of people who probably turned out like really as a, exceptional, kind and talented and competent people, probably because. People like you invested in them yeah. and gave a shit and didn't let them just fall by the wayside. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. When he was 12, um, he was um, skating in Fitchburg and he asked me if I could photograph him. Um, he was doing the mini ramp and his father came up to me and he said, you know, I can sue you, right? And I said, yeah, you can go ahead. You can go ahead and try. I know he's a minor, but he's asking for a photograph. And if you want to sue me, you go right ahead, um, you know, and go ahead and do it. Um, but then he never bothered me after that. But he had a father kind of like, kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the thing too. Like, I mean, it's not just about landing a trick necessarily for a lot of these people no. either. Because it's like no. once you know, like you can set your mind to doing this crazy fucking thing you saw someone do on Instagram like three years ago. And you work at it every single day for yeah. weeks or months and you can do it too. Like yeah. that opens doors for you can do anything. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the things that I, I forgot to mention that I've learned about skating is that you don't need much. Yeah. You, you could give them a, a box, um, a quarter pipe, anything, and they're content. Yeah. You don't need a full-blown, you know, it's anything, and they're happy. Yeah. You know, one ledge. It could be one ledge. It'll be my sons would spend, I don't know if I told you, countless hours at the skate park when they were little. Yeah. I'd bring them in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, it would be sunset, 90 degree, scorching hot, refusing to leave the skate park. <laughs> and I was just, you know, I was thinking to myself, you really, really love this stuff. Yeah. So, I, you know, I get it. I understand. Yeah. So. What a wild thing. Huh? It's beautiful. Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. And let me tell you, um, Joshua, he's my 16-year-old. I'll tell you something I'll never forget, ever. Uh, we were in Harborston at a tiny skate park there. And he's standing on his board, and there's like six kids surrounding him. And he did something. I don't know what it was, but he did something, and they were all, they were all just like 
in shock. Nobody was expecting that. He That's was like cool. maybe like 12, 13 years old. Like even myself, I'm looking at him. And the stuff he does now is like, I'm just blown away the stuff he does. Yeah. 16 year old. So good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and like, how old are they now? They're both they're yeah, your 18, sons. 18. Junior's 18 and Joshua's 16. Wow. But he was around 10 at the time. And I, they, they were all surrounding him just standing like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and then Junior, he did a 360 at the um, Gold Skateboarding Day the other day. Oh, yeah? And I was shouting. And the, the girl standing next to me said, you must be a proud dad. Say that. <laughs> I say yes. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah, so the yeah. so the at the at the Chinatown courts yeah. where go skateboarding day. Yeah, was that that was a competition? Uh, no, it was like it an was, event. An event, but it wasn't like a, an actual competition. Right, it was so just the, a celebration. Yeah. Right, so people were like kind of doing tricks and like uh, everyone yeah. like with an audience there yeah. almost. Yeah. Wow, so that must have been really cool to like witness them kind of in their element yeah. with people yeah. cheering and shit yeah. and like seeing them. Yeah. Kind of like in an exhibition. Yes. Doing the shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let me tell you another thing too that happened here. Um, I don't know if you were here when they. Um, where you from, skateboard? Yeah, I was. Yeah, when I was at was that one. Here? Yeah. Okay, so that day, um, um, Armin um, took notice of my two boys, and then a kid came up to me. I was sitting over here on this end, and a kid came up to me and said, um, "The owner of Orchard is talking to your son right now." Wow! And 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 he and he pointed them out, and I saw him from a distance, um, and I was like, I'm not gonna go and interrupt that moment. Yeah. Right. I'm not gonna do that. You know, <laughs> I'm not gonna be you know hovering over him. I'm just not gonna do it. And and they and they just instantly they connected that day, arming with my two boys, and I'm still like in disbelief. Yeah, because that's a yeah. big deal. They're like yeah. a really well-known yeah. skate yeah. shop yeah. and yeah. Yeah. popular brand, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's fucking yeah. really awesome. Like that must have felt really good to to yes. achieve that, yes. you know, and to get that that respect, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. And Armin, you know, I can call him, text him. That I never, never in my in my life ever thought that somebody would, you know, have that respect. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. Well, you, yeah. your photographs and like your presence in, in this kind of this ecosystem here is become like or is like a fixture. Yeah. Like I think everybody knows about your photographs. Yeah. Totally at this right. point in the yeah. in the skate in the skate world, because you got you've got a number of followers on the on the Facebook page and okay. and a lot of people a lot of people interacting and, and watching the photos on Instagram too. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So like yeah, I think it's re- definitely like really like because like I yeah. think like a, a a local following is can be pretty hard to achieve. I guess you know, yeah. so they really like. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. all that let me tell you boring something. stuff. Yeah, let me tell you something about uh, the following. Yeah. Uh, my son, um, he asked he asked me the other day if I'll ever reach fourteen thousand, and I told him that to me it didn't really matter. I said what what really mattered to me was that the little number, the small number that I have, are people that I've met and know. Yeah. And that's and that's what that's what that's what matters to me. Yeah, you know. And when you yeah. think about it like that, knowing yeah. 500 people yeah. that you literally have actually met and known, yeah. that's yeah. a lot of people. Okay, yeah, yeah. 900, <laughs> 900. Nine, oh yeah, like nine to, yeah, to yeah. actually meet and, and yeah. know the names of and photograph yes. 900 people. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a lot. That's insane. So. Yeah, yeah, three, three, 300 in the last two months. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, in the last. What's the difference between like friends and followers, like having yeah. a community. Yeah. Yeah really investing right. in that community and amplifying those people and yeah. their abilities yeah because people like i said before like people really really care like people yeah. like to be de- depicted by a, yeah. a professional yeah. and, and 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 that in an interesting cool way and to be put up on the portfolio online like that yeah. means a lot to people like yeah. it's almost like kind of like micro versions of the impact you've had on, on these kids at the skate camp and like driving them around like that's like is a it's kind of like a uh, a, a blessing and kind of a, an approval you know yeah, what i mean because yeah, yeah. like i like i said before like as as artists like we can kind of take for granted like you know you probably have a more critical eye about your photographs than the uh, average person looking yeah. at them yes. but uh you know you probably are like oh i could have done this better or, like yeah, this was yeah. actually easy yeah. but like to other people that you know they're like holy shit like yeah. that looks like a fucking 
like NPR photo yeah. or like yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, I yeah. looks like I'm in a magazine yeah, yeah you know yeah. <laughs> I think another thing too that's really cool about it is like when we talk about like people kind of portraying themselves as like super tough or being able to do these kinds of things or like this is my part kind of attitude cool guy that yeah. is that's cool like that's totally fine people do that but I think something that it creates is like if you're not that kind of person or if you feel insecure about how you're skating or like young girls coming to the skate park or queer people it almost feels like maybe you wouldn't be welcome there, even if that's not necessarily what the actual vibe is. So it's cool. You photograph all kinds of people and like young kids, people yeah. that are older, oh, and yeah. it kind of makes it more like like anybody is welcome here and anybody can belong in this space. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to tell you um, uh, about a photo I took a few years ago that I'm never gonna forget right here, um, where the small bowl is up against the fence. I'll never forget this. There was a girl and a guy standing together with their boards, um, and I was at a good distance. I, I had my Zoom that day, and they knew they were being photographed, and they were okay with it, and they were both smiling, but I'll never forget this. Um, I zoomed into the photo, because um, sometimes, you know, you want to clean them up a little bit. Sometimes you got a bottle or something you want to get Sure, up. yeah. And, and I'll never forget this. Um, they both had a big, huge, beautiful smile on their faces. But the one thing I noticed on her arm, I'll never forget it. It looked like she had um, self-inflicted um, oh, wow. uh, bruises on her yeah. arms. And, and you would never, you would have never, you know, you would have never known. She yeah. had this big, huge, beautiful smile on her face. Yeah. And I'm looking at these cuts on her arms. Right. And that was like, to me, I, I never forgot that. You know? yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's such a different, it's such a different side of, of yeah. this type of, type of community. Because, like, you definitely... You're de depicting these people happy, mm -hmm. having fun, like vulnerable, like and, and candid, you know, yeah. and like you don't have an angle, like you don't have an agenda, like you're yeah. depicting it in reality yeah. Yeah. as it as it truly is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like these people, like despite their struggles or what they've been through or yeah. what people think about them, you're photographing people in their element, in their flow state, happy. You know what I mean, and it and it comes through, and that, and that is like when all is said and done, years and years from now, like those photographs are going to be worth a lot more than like I don't know, like posed pictures or yeah, pictures or like or shit people took themselves yeah, or yeah. like you know tough guy like yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that's like that's cool, but like the real like what really happened, what yeah. really was going on at Lynch Skate Park in the last five years. Yeah. or les or you know where, wherever you're shooting like because yeah. that the those moments those small moments those like day-to-day -day, like casual like those are are usually unrecorded yeah like those yeah. like yeah. people aren't like yeah. those you know those are usually lost moments just yeah. to time you know yeah. but to capture them it kind of you know what it kind of reminded me of is like you ever like see photographs where it's just like oh like this is what it was like in Greenwich Village in 1960 like isn't yeah. this rare and cool photo like you know what I mean and you're like wow they're regular people just like us yeah. or some shit and like a people that no one will ever know the names of I wouldn't be surprised if that happened like with yeah, yours you know yeah yeah and let me tell you something cool that happened the other day um father and son mm -hmm. in um New York City um I start photographing them. Father comes up to me and says, I haven't skated in 28 years. Wow. And I got back on the board because of my son. Wow. wow. That's <laughs> brought, cool. Yeah, it was like, can you imagine that? 28 years he didn't skate. Right. You're, you're, if you go on the Instagram, you'll see them. Uh, they're yeah. Both, they're both standing together in front of uh, the coping. The yeah. Leather. Yeah. Yeah, oh, 28 wow. years. That must be so cool to rediscover a passion you used to have through your kids, too. Yes. That must be crazy to come full circle like that. Yeah, and, and and if you saw them together, like right there, when I was standing there just looking at both of them together, that was like... It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I had a similar experience here one time where I saw a dad and his son, and the kid was probably, it's definitely like under 10, like he was a little kid. Uh -huh. And as the dad was explaining to this, teaching him about wax, okay. about wax, how you can wax a ledge and it helps uh, you slide. Yeah. But, and the kid was like, whoa, like I didn't know you could do that. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a simple thing, like the wax a lot, but like it was funny to just see that passed down yeah. just from like this tattoo dad yeah, like yeah, yeah. And <laughs> to this little little kid. That's so cool. But yeah, I it's, think it's oh sorry. Oh go ahead, yeah. Well I was just gonna say I think it's awesome too to see parents bringing their kids to the parks. I think there's probably 
like I don't, I don't have kids or anything but I'd imagine that there's an element of like kind of being afraid your kid's gonna get hurt mm-hmm. or like they're yeah, gonna yeah. fall so yeah. being supportive of them doing something like this and really believing in them because like if I feel like if you tell a kid that they're gonna get hurt or if you come with that energy when they're trying to do something they're afraid of they're not gonna do yeah. it they're gonna think that they're gonna <laughs> yeah. fall yeah, but if yeah. you're right. supportive of them and you're like you're gonna just do it just try right. it oh yeah that's I, awesome to be able I to saw this that. one time I was at the skate park in Hingham and it was it was different it was scooter kids they weren't on skateboards but there was this little kid he was probably three feet tall and he was on his scooter at, at the, the deep end of the bowl and all of his friends are yelling they're like send it send it and the kid's mom is there and he's, she's like you don't have to do it if you're uncomfortable don't do it like you're gonna and then the kid and they're all like send it like all his little friends and then the kid did oh, and, wow. he, and he dropped in on the yeah. scooter on the bowl and like wow but yeah, it was oh like such God. like yeah, an intense. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was just kind of a fly on the wall. Like I was just watching, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, it's wow. the best moment of his life. Dude, that yeah. kid was probably, <laughs> probably didn't sleep that night. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Probably hyped. One Wait. of the kids with, uh, with us here today, uh, I think he's probably 16. Yeah. He was 11 at the time. Mm-hmm. Standing at the very deep end of the bowl here. Wow. wow. Okay first time that's a big ass bowl yep he's standing he's standing there yeah and he's literally looking down like this and i said please don't if you ain't ready don't do it please you know please don't do it a whole bunch of grown-ups surrounding him and he he, la- he landed it he went he down went? the deep end the deep end wow and his name is daniel um he's one of like the original kids um that started traveling with us he's here today with us that's awesome that's yeah, probably yeah. like a 12 foot 12 14 14, 14, 14, 14 foot 14, deep hole yeah. yeah he did it on the, on the deep end the very very deep end how wow. old is he now 16 he's, oh, wow. he's here today wow that's cool yeah damn are you here with the camp today he's here in china he's in china today. oh they're oh, out there on the yeah. right yeah. gotcha daniel nice. his name is daniel is there a group of them like a big group of them out right now da- skating da- daniel is with us um dylan who's actually going to me- a medical school here in boston now oh cool. cool and alex is um also one of the original guys and Word. i don't have more because I ran um, two vans into the ground and I got a Tucson right now, so I can't fit them in there. Oh, Otherwise, gotcha. yeah, I'd yeah. have probably like 10 of them. With, with right, them. gotcha. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. What an awesome thing. And you're here today at, at, at Lynch yeah. Park. Just are you, are you been taking photographs today? I haven't, but um, I was here, uh, quite honestly, waiting for you. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And looking forward um, to seeing you again and talking to you. Yeah, this has been so, an awesome interview. And I'm glad, I'm actually glad that you, that you know, that we got together and we did this in person, too. Yeah. It's better. It was yeah. just kind of weird over the phone. Yeah. Like, yeah, we've, we've done so many phone interviews with people and they, they're, they can be hit or miss. Yeah. with like the quality and like i think a face-to-face conversation is so much better anyway yeah you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. so especially too i was really excited to actually do it here okay, like yeah. on location yeah. at the at the park you know because yeah. this is like the the element yeah because like what we've been trying to do is visit artists that are like painters or whatever in their studios and like this is basically your studio right right yeah yeah wow yeah that's a really cool way to think about it oh, yeah. yeah there's a there's a guy um a father um he went to skate camp a few years ago um i'll never forget this um he showed up at the garden skate park when they when it was first built and he said i'm declaring this a success right <laughs> so so i photographed him with his son right and i and i said um he has declared the jackson skate park a success right and this lady says it's gonna be a success when they start wearing their helmets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so you know, there's always somebody you know that, that has something to say. You know? Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> so, but I, I mean, I'm for the helmets, though. Sure. You know, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm for them, but you know, it's a lost battle with my with my kids. Yeah. Right. You know? But like uh-huh. when they were little, and I brought them here, it was mandatory. Oh, yeah. when they were younger, when right? When they were younger, yeah, and they were here. I said, if, if you're not gonna wear the helmet, you're not you're not coming with me. Yeah, right. Especially when you're learning, there's no shame yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I cracked my head at um, Skater's Edge the other day, Ooh. a couple weeks ago. Oh but. yeah, we were in the, the deep bowl. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Headbutt yeah. straight to the wall, wow. but um, <laughs> yeah, that's happened to me. That happened to me. I don't really at this point in my life. I'm not really. I don't set like I don't try things like any anything could happen even with the smallest things but i don't i'm not really taking it to ex- super extremes at this point in time <laughs> but like when i was younger i definitely got some concussions or some Ooh. bad injuries i broke my ankles when i was a kid too but 
I broken both my ankles. Literally. Wow. Not at the same time. The two separate times. I was like, what were you doing? It was within the same, like, two years. Did you see Maddie the other day? Oh, the uh, skate fast? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the bowl. Yeah, he yeah. went down. He yeah, hit his head? Yeah, yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah, he was wearing a helmet yesterday. So when I saw yeah. him, I like this to him. Yeah. Oh my god. So he got he fucking yeah, yeah. cuz that video he has a video yeah. on his Instagram yeah. of him kind of doing an air but the board gets caught at the lip. Yeah. And he just went the board stayed on the lip and he went in the bowl. Oh yeah. Like so, like, like 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 Yeah, like, probably. Oh, man. Like this whole area. I, I'm surprised he was skating yesterday. It's like how do you come back from that? Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's yeah. fucking really good. He yeah. cuz he skates both of the really big bowls and yeah. he goes he's going in the yeah. air. He's sailing. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, talented he, dude yeah he was here yesterday wow it's yeah. crazy shit mm -hmm. there was another thing i wanted to mention um i i don't think i mentioned this um in the first interview uh, when i was a kid i'm gonna say around nine ten years old uh there was a photo studio across the street from where i lived on flatbush avenue and every single day i would cross the street and i would stand in front of the studio and look at the portraits hanging on the wall. And the one thing that always caught my eye above any, everything else was the lighting on the portraits. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I told you that before. So uh, to me, it was, it was more so about lighting more than um, the subject, uh, composition, and framing. It was, always, it was always about lighting to me. So not that you necessarily need like bright, you know, brightness all the time, you know, depending on the mood. Um, I also used to go to um, the supermarket too, and you know how they have the magazines like right next to the register? Yeah. And I would always look at the magazines and always wondered, always wondering how they capture that. Again, the lighting. So I think that that studio in front of the building where I live sort of did something to my psyche mm. because I've always I've been passionate about photography since I was a little kid. Yeah. Wow. So I would say the studio. And the guy, he was a black guy with gray hair. I only saw him maybe three times, and I could visually, I could pick him out if I saw him right now. I never forgot his face. Wow. Wow. So it was literally across the street. That I even, like, I was trying to find it online the other day. I couldn't find him. I mean, he's wow. probably not around anyway. Sure. I'm talking like 40, 40 years right, ago. Right, yeah, a long time ago. 40 wow. years ago, and at the time, he was probably 40. Well, wait, he might be around. Yeah, who knows? He might, he might be around. Wow. A black guy with gray hair, but I wish I knew his name because if I did, I could find it right. easier. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of like your first inspiration. Yeah, with your art. Yeah, huh. yeah. I would, I would literally just stand there, right in front of the window, and just look at the portraits hanging on the wall every single day. And like, even if I I didn't have to cross the street, but I would just cross the street just to go and stand in front of that studio. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right on Flatbush Avenue. No shit. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Flatbush and, and, and Hawthorne. I'll never forget it. Wow. That'd be really interesting to figure out who that is. Yeah. yeah. I, I would love I would love to find that guy. And, and I'm sure if he's uh, around, he'd probably yeah. love to know that yeah. just by virtue, just through the windows, inspired yeah. a, somebody doing undertaking such a massive and interesting portrait yeah. project. Yeah. And he did <laughs> photograph this. You know, my my mother brought us in one time. Oh, he took your photo too. He did. He did one time. Wow. I gotta when when I find it, <laughs> when I find it, I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah. There's one, there's one of me looking sad, and then there's another one of me actually smiling. Oh, so, wow. So he he did both. It's a good brain. When I find it, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to Please you. Please do. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, wow. I have to dig in because I posted it like a year ago. Yeah. But I'll find it. Oh I'm yeah. Gonna send it to you so you can see it. And my mother still has that portrait. Sure, yeah. It's uh, my, me and my two brothers at the time. My other two siblings didn't exist at the time. Gotcha. It was just right. the three of us. Three huh. boy, you'll see three boys. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, three on one row and then three on the bottom row, smiling and then, you know, not smiling. Right, yeah. yeah. I wonder if it's watermarked in the back or anything. Do you find the studio that it was? I, uh, probably not because, like, even the photo is some areas, too. It's like... Um, it's a bit damaged. Worn. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, damaged, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. But I never, I never forgot his face. And when we went in there, I was a little kid. Yeah. yeah. Huh. It's crazy how things from that young can influence your work for the rest of your life, uh -huh. the way you think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because like, I think too, one kind of theme that we've run into a few times throughout this conversation is the idea of kind of like one generation passing something onto the next. You know what I mean? 
and like just like you've done you know leading by example and taking initiative and and you know inspiring the, these kids at the skate camp and and you know these kids you're, you've been driving around like you know it's kind of like in a sense even though maybe you didn't spend a lot of time with this guy he kind of did that for you yeah. in a strange way i'm sure there's yeah. a million other examples yeah. Yeah. of the people in your life doing that for you yeah. and yes. throughout your childhood and yeah. stuff yeah a few years ago um i was in fitchburg at the skate park and there was a guy i'm gonna say he was probably around 25 at the time uh, he was going to fitchburg university um, and he stood in front of me in tears and he told me how his father had told him many times that skateboarding was a waste of time. Um, and he said, I see how you've been with your own kids. And he said, I wish I had a father like you. You know, and that, that moment right there to me, like, it meant the world. Yeah. Wow. What a beautiful thing. Yeah. Especially, too, to just know like that and to have that that evidence of, of the difference yeah. that you're making yeah. you know what I mean through your experiences and, and what people have told you and and a, a, as evidenced by this massive portfolio you're building yeah. Yeah. you know what do you how many do you, do you have any idea how many posts you have uh, no, on Instagram I, alone on Instagram I'll tell you right now and I'm sure there's probably thousands more that are just in your archives yes um, so 465 but on the Facebook, there's over a thousand. Yeah, so that's like it, that. You could you could print fifteen hundred coffee people. table books of photos. Oh, that's that that's that photograph of the. That was yesterday. Wow. That's the guy that that I told you was talking to me. That I, I thought he yeah, was yeah. gonna skate, and he said I'm here to do the same thing. Yeah. You're doing. <laughs> Yeah. Now you know what a little bit uh, a more a more technical question. Yeah. So when you go out, you're doing you're in like kind of like in the in the field, photographing people, meeting people, and stuff. What does your process look like after that? Are you getting home and getting right into an office setting or like editing or like how does that process look for you um, from, from camera to upload? Well, usually um, my wife, she kind of gets upset because oh, yeah. I kind of like spend a lot of time on this. Yeah. So every time I go home, she's like, oh, there you go again, the photo, the photo. And she doesn't understand that when you capture something, when you capture beauty, you want to see it yeah you just want to see it so i'll go home open up my laptop usually i'll be in the living room um and i just start going through images and i usually just um i will either weed out the bad ones or sometimes it's a lot easier if you see something you like just drag it into a folder i'll, I'll let's say i'll create folders like for skate fast skate oh often. yeah Oh, that's what's up. A few of them that are here that I that I photograph a lot. Yeah, they have the, like their own folders. Wow. And I just drag them in their folder. So sometimes they'll ask me for a photo, and I don't have to spend hours searching for it. Yeah. I yeah. already have the folder. You're, right. I have the folders, um, you know, set up. Huh. I'll tell you another thing that was funny too. Um, the other day, there was a guy, uh, Chris uh, Greenwell. I don't know if you know him. I photographed him with a with a green T-shirt. Okay. So he didn't know I have four kids. I have two boys and two girls. And he didn't know. And then he says to me, now I understand why you started keep kids off the street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you started with your own kids. And right, he, yeah. he didn't know. He didn't know. But, yeah, I have two boys and two girls. It's, uh, ki it's kind of funny, a little yeah. bit ironic, too, yeah. that you're, the whole thing is keep kids off the street to help yeah. kids yeah. and yeah. skateboarding. But your kids only want to skate the street. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I had a guy. I had a guy actually. He wrote something the other day on on the Facebook page, uh, saying, you know, like, uh, you know, what are you talking about keeping kids off the street? You know, what are you talking about? You know, and I say you need to educate yourself because a lot of people they see adults, so they get confused. And I have to explain to them, I have adults to show that skateboarding it's it doesn't matter how young or old you are. Yeah, yeah. Skateboarding is just all around a good thing for, for all ages. But some people, they, you know, they see the adults, they get confused. So I have mm. to explain to them, it's all, it's all about keeping the kids out of trouble. But I also enjoy photographing adults who happen to skateboard. Yeah. I just, you know, I enjoy that. Because really most do. of them have loved it since they were kids. Yeah. Like, they're examples of it being a success. Yes. Yeah, and another thing, too, is there is no, like, you know, with... 
uh, with other sports, with disciplines, with anything from martial arts to hockey to photography to painting, there are texts to reference. There are professors, there are mentors, there are schools. But something like skateboarding, that doesn't exist. No. The closest no. thing to that that exists is, I don't know, like a Tony Hawk video game or like yeah, the yeah. Barracks YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. But with, yeah. so, and with that being yeah. said, skateboarding is, is, uh, is like generational, word of mouth. It's yeah. like an oral tradition in a sense where like the dad teaching his kid that he has to wax the ledge if he wants to grind it or like these things because there is no database of like i've something i've always found fascinating about skateboarding too is the fact that there is no institution naming skateboard tricks there is no book of tricks that you can reference and look up but everybody no matter where you are knows what a kickflip is yes everybody knows what these tricks just have viral known names that nobody and, and i think that that's really beautiful because and to talk about keep kids off the street like it's not just children like there's these adults there's older people yeah. younger people that really highlights how important that generational uh tradition is because like you know if those older older people weren't there and there were kids learning in a vacuum they'd probably be fine but they there's a lot that they would that would get lost yeah. that they wouldn't know uh, you know whether it's I don't know just anything even if it's just the history or yeah. pro skateboarders from from days before that are retired or whatever you know like mm-hmm. that document that documenting passing down of information is in a way like right there close to the heart of skateboarding and the reason that that it can exist mm-hmm. you know yeah. kind of odd there aren't a, there aren't a lot of things that are that popular that that are that just word of mouth you know what i mean like there really aren't sports like that so that's kind of remarkable maybe there's i don't know maybe i could wax on about this for like forever but like well it's true though like when the time we went to skater's edge and there was that like 16 or 17 year old kid teaching a bunch of 10 year olds how to drop in on a scooter like just showing them like that kind of hands-on mentorship of being recognized by an older kid or an adult that means so much when you're like 10 and trying to like i don't know maybe trying to do like i don't know learning how to do a kickflip or learn how to ollie and like your mom or your dad don't really care or don't get it and it's like this person does though like there's somebody here who's gonna think this is awesome my friends are gonna freak out when they see that i can do this like that kind of like generational or i don't know if it's generational necessarily if you're talking about teenager but sure kind of it's good for older kids to be able to kind of slow down and teach younger kids and relate to them on that level like an interpersonal respect kind of thing in the same way it is good for those kids to be recognized by those people that are older than them and better than them net for now (laughs) yeah yeah that because it's like that like it's like so much of this information would be would literally be gone yeah if that kind of shit didn't happen you know what i mean so which is which is very very interesting and there's so much and like the, the young, really young kids right now, like people will call them, there's a lot of conversation publicly about, you know, like Gen Z and the younger kids about being digital natives, you know, and growing up with iPhones and growing up with YouTube and Instagram and whatever. And it's really interesting because like, there's a lot of like, that's like, there's a lot of discourse about that. But as it relates to skateboarding specifically, these kids, like one thing that uh, when I was, when I was really young, like nine, 10, 11, first starting to skate, to have a friend with a camera was a very very fortunate and cool thing because before that you couldn't document your tricks like you couldn't when you learned something when you did some something like you couldn't now i can set up my phone and just do some shit or have my buddy film a line or whatever and that is like a fucking blessing to to the whole culture of it because people can can document their tricks can just dis- distribute it and pass along the information and progress so much faster because so they could see what's out there yeah you know and what i mean see what they're doing like yeah. it's not it's not a sport you can practice in front of a mirror or have somebody give you immediate feedback all the time that's like true you can yeah. actually watch what you've done and then go back and do it again yes yeah, yeah. My sons would, um, we were talking about this right here. Yeah. They've been filming each other for years. Right. And the first time I saw them, I was literally blown away seeing Joshua, like, on his board, just following his brother, yeah. you know, and filming him. And to me, that was like, like you were just saying, that's like, wow. Yeah. You know? 
they, they film they film each they take turns filming each other right that's so cool yeah yeah do you think having that in common is deep in their bond too as siblings I, I, I would say so i know i know that joshua did mention that he became inspired by his brother yeah. by, by junior that's cool yeah it's really cool yeah. Oh, there was a uh, there was a poem. I don't know if you saw it. I posted on Facebook the other day, where uh, my son Joshua wrote that he was mad at me because I didn't buy him a real board. He was little at the time, but he wrote this poem, and he said skateboarding was it's like a religion, but instead of the cross, it's a skateboard. And he went on a beautiful poem. I posted it the other day on Facebook. Wow. But uh, but it but it says I was mad at Dad because he <laughs> didn't buy me a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> He was like nine years old. My my wife found it the other day. Oh she yeah. Said, here, she said, "Here, read this." <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check that out. That's yeah, so yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. I've been going for an hour and a half already. Yeah, we're an hour and thirty minutes. This did fly by. There was yeah. There was a couple of things that I said, I gotta see if I can remember that I, I had it in the back of my head. Yeah. To mention, um, but I gotta think I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had a few, like a few, I, I should have written it down. I had a few things that I wanted to tell you. Oh, sure. Did you um, want to talk about the, the the shirts or any kind of oh, fundraising yeah. efforts that you yeah. that you have going right now? Yes. Yeah, so um, I started, um, well, I'll go from the, from, from the beginning. Sure. Um, there's a company called Stahls, uh, S-T-A-H-L-S, and they're in the business of making heat presses and um garments or, or um, designs for t-shirts um, and I applied um, a few months ago for a scholarship and then I was one of the five winners out of hundreds of people which I thought was cool um, and they sent me a heat press and we've been talking um, over via zoom uh, they helped me create a few designs um, I don't know if you've seen the skateboarding dog um, that was one. Of oh the yeah, time. your teacher. Th- those yeah. are you're you're heat pressing those. Yeah. Oh wow, good yeah. job. Those, yeah. They look good. Yep. So that dog that actually was a uh, an actual dog who was skateboarding during skate camp like five years ago. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> so my wife said, you need to find a photo, your own image, and out of hundreds of photo, that was the one that stood out the most. The skateboarding. He was at that that dog was actually skateboarding. That That's day. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So you I'll show you the shirt later. Yeah. I have it in the car. So they they helped me with the designing that. Um I also have the smiley face with the tongue out. My wife's not crazy about it, so I don't <laughs> know. I might just put that aside. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got a couple of other designs that I haven't put out yet. So basically the t-shirts that money is going 100% towards skateboards um, for skate camp. I've only sold around, I'm going to say around 30. The goal was 200. It's not going to happen. But as I said, um, Armin's going to give me stuff at his cost. From so, Orchard. From Orchard. So so I should come close to, to my goal. Um, wow. Uh, you know. And getting so, getting skateboards uh, to, yeah, to the kids. Yep, uh, to give out on the last day. They don't know. Um, I usually give out between two and four skateboards, and this year I'm hoping to give every single one of them a skateboard. That's so uh, cool. Yeah, that's it's that's been my dream for a year for like. They're gonna be years. hyped. Yeah, you know, it'd be yeah. sick too. This would probably be so expensive, but imagine if you printed keep kids off the street st- yeah. uh, street uh, decks. Yeah, like just literal like skateboards it. with the skateboarding dog on them or something. Yeah, yeah. that'd be sick. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Wow, and also so and um. Is are the T-shirts available for purchase uh, online? The website, um, unfortunately, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to technology. Gotcha. And I have the company. Um, we've already had three Zoom meetings, and I'm still trying to figure things out. But I have another meeting this Wednesday, so I'm hoping the website's going to be up and running. I would say hopefully by either Wednesday or Friday of next week. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that that'll probably be live by the time we air this. Okay, yeah. So. Great. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and if you don't mind, yeah, um, I want to photograph the both of you. Oh yeah, yeah we'd love that'd to. Be awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can make it the uh, the picture for the episode. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. So I'm gonna have you exactly <laughs> right here. Okay, you know, yeah. Exactly how you were sitting, and earlier you were sitting, you were sitting like this. Yeah. So, I was yeah. sitting like this the whole time. Perfect. <laughs> and, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot because I want that that thing. Oh, the bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe oh, we could so maybe cool. we could keep recording while we take it yeah. to be like really meta. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I, I was actually I was actually photographing you guys a few times and and thinking to myself this would be a really cool shot. <laughs> oh, awesome! And, uh, you know, as you were talking, when you were talking, like, yeah, this would be a cool, cool shot. So <laughs> I love that's that. why that's why I told you that's how you were when I was like, oh, that's a cool shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm gonna shoot like. Like right here. Hell yeah. yeah awesome. Um, that sounds and, awesome. And then I'm going to shoot from this angle here. Perfect. Yeah. Th this one here, you, you're going to be a little bit soft. Okay. And vice versa. Yeah. Then I want to get you. Oh, uh, okay. I okay. Get you both. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I trust the process. Yeah. It'd be beautiful. Yeah. This is so cool to see this happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to be recording well, you knew the process I, too. I mean, you knew I was going to ask, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. And the first time I met you too. Yeah, to, yeah, oh, yeah, like that, that was when we first that met that photo. photograph on my yeah. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a moment where I don't really 100% know what to do with my hands. You're going to be able to see the <laughs> iPhone <laughs> recorder. <laughs> Maybe I could hold it like this too, so you could see the, uh, the screen info. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I want you to look at her. I want you oh, to yeah. look at her. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> we don't have a lot of photographs of us together. We really don't. It's yeah. Weird. Huh. <laughs> That's too cool. <laughs> this is beautiful. Oh, awesome. I'm so excited. Sweet. <laughs> I'm going to get you from this angle. Awesome. Where's your board? Uh, I got one here. You can hold it. This is one of Theo's drawings on it. It was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we get the uh, the grip art yep. too. Flat Earth Society. Flat Earth. <laughs> awesome. For sure. Do me a favor, you yeah. You sit up for it? Yep. Awesome. And Thank you. Yep, and you'll you you will get these. I'll get rid of that. Yeah, this is awesome. We love to put them up on oh our gosh, uh, Boston awesome. Art uh, sites too and stuff. Yeah, that's beautiful right there. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Let me let me let me move this here real quick because otherwise I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some time in Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, move those out of the way. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a funny ending to this. <laughs> <laughs> We're still <laughs> recording. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's that's less time that I'm gonna spend on Photoshop. So yeah, there yeah you go. absolutely. But yeah, that's beautiful right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this has been an awesome experience. Yeah. Hell oh yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, thank you. you have your, your work, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I was telling someone the other day, um, I never forget some someone I photograph ever. Huh. Yeah. Never. Wow. Yeah. I, I could, you know, meet somebody, photograph them 10 years down the road. They'll come and say, hey, do you remember me? I'm like... Hey. Hell yeah. <laughs> I do, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, so... Yeah, so y'all send those um, by tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, because I'll be home late tonight. And as I said, when I get home, my wife's not too happy. Right, yeah, you'll be up but, late editing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we, um, you know, sometimes my wife says that I didn't dedicate a lot of time to the girls. Hmm. Yeah. So, and, um, because of the boys, you know, this is all they wanted to do. So, uh, you know, I got to get to a point where I, you know, hopefully start bringing my daughters out here and my wife too. Right. Yeah. Hey, maybe there's a whole other chapter. Maybe they'll yeah. get into like yeah. BMX yeah, yeah. or well, yeah. <laughs> roller skating or something. The youngest has skateboarded. Oh yeah, she has. Yeah, she's uh, 14, and I've been trying to trying to get her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I bet there's there's definitely still a lot of time, and yeah. as as much as that has happened with keep kids off the street and skateboarding that you had no clue was going to happen. Yeah. I bet anything's possible. So. There's probably many chapters yet to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we'll interview you then, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll see me. You'll see me on a board one of these days. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah, I guess I'll shut this off, yeah. and we'll uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. So keep kids off the street yeah. on Facebook and Instagram and a, and a website. Link in the description when that launches. Yeah. yeah thank you guys for listening. Boss and Art Podcast. Woo. Peace. And I, I want to see you. I want to see you skateboarding today. Oh yeah, for sure. Maybe I'll do some stuff. <laughs> All right. <laughs>